So we're currently live, but we're going to wait to see if anybody shows up first before we crack in. That looks like somebody joined. I will never know who it is. Uh, I don't think. I've never, uh, I've never streamed before. Yes, I am live streaming right now. I'm going to switch these windows so I can see it a little bit better. There we go. Um, oh, participants. Oh, that's me. Okay. See, we got two people watching now here. Yeah, I'll just do this here. Hold on. Okay, that's not what that is. All right. Mind. Come on, 200 subscribers. Come on in. It's only 11.35 my time. <laughs> Most of you are probably in bed by now, but either way, this will get, I guess this will get saved for posterity in either case. So anyway, hey there, this is Dark Mario 2 here once again. And I'm coming at you today with uh, something very, very special and near and dear to my heart. Um... It's the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie starring Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. Um, now, growing up, I used to rent this movie quite a bit uh, from Blockbuster. Uh, other classics included uh, Jingle All the Way. And uh, once in a while, I would rent like the Power Rangers movie. You know, that sort of thing. But this is a unopened box. Skybox brand. Super Mario Brothers the movie uh, trading cards and I'm gonna open this box up fresh and new um, the Dark Mario 2 stream here and we're gonna see what's inside and hopefully uh, get at least one full set out of it and I know we will get at least one full set out of it because um, there are so many packs in here that there's no way we couldn't get a full set so Without further ado, let's... Well, I did bring my box cutter. I was going to cut her open, but we don't even have to. We can just... Itching to be opened here. There it is. Already a lot less glossy, so it'll be a lot easier to film, hopefully. There we go. Okay. We're going to give the box a whiff here. Oh, man. It smells like... It smells like Comic-Con is the best way to describe it, it is that old cardboard smell. Um, but in a good way, you know, in a nostalgic way. All right, so let's look at the box first here. Um, hmm. Is it flipping it for you guys, or is it not? I think it might be flipping it for you guys. Is it flipping, for, is it flipping it for you? Could you tell me before I go any further? So, uh, I guess we'll start. We'll start on one side and work our way around. So, with their Skybox brand, which I I don't know if I've ever heard of uh, Sky Skybox brand trading cards, uh, because great cards are hard to find, though apparently, uh, they promise randomly packed hologram cards in every box. Uh, there are eight cards per pack, and there are thirty six packs in this box. Nice, beautiful picture of Jean Leguizamo there. Really, really greasy looking. All right, on the back, uh, collect all one hundred, all one hundred Super Mario Brothers cards and holograms. Does that mean that there are a hundred holograms? We can hope. Super Mario Brothers Skybox, Skybox International, um, trademark and copyright nineteen ninety three Nintendo. All rights reserved. Buena Vista Pictures, Allied Filmmakers. Um, Research, Research Triangle Park, North Carolina. Printed in the USA. Okay, let's see what we got here. Super Mario Brothers trading cards. 
clear, colorful story cards featuring scenes, characters, and special effects from the movie. A special card subset presenting a unique behind-the-scenes look at this fabulous film. Three randomly inserted and highly collectible hologram cards. Oh, there's only three. Eight cards per pack, 36 packs per box. Odds of finding hologram cards are approximately 1 in 18 packs. All right. <laughs> this ain't no game. All right. So without further ado, let's see exactly what I paid a little bit too much on eBay for. Okay. Hopefully I can get this open without destroying it. Okay. We're going to do this up right here. Break the seal. All right. We are halfway there. Okay. So here we go. Take this flaps open here. Oh, let's get going. The box has fallen apart already. Fix that real quick. There we go. All right. So, pack number one. Sky. It's. It, I, it's I like it that the uh, that the branding of the uh, cards isn't even or is like the first thing on the. Uh, you know, the first thing on the art. It's not even the title of like what the cards are. I thought that was interesting. All right. Um. All the inf same information's on the back. They feel like they've gotten, and this is probably the case, especially for something this old. Uh, they feel like they've gotten hot, <laughs> like really hot in the intervening like years. Uh, so hopefully, I just didn't buy uh, a bunch of packs of like fused together cardboard. So we're gonna see here. So pack number one, break that thirty-year-old seal. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I'm going to go through, some, and I'm going to explain some of these here, uh, because uh, people have not seen this movie. This is going to seem, this is all going to seem really weird. So the first one is the de-evolution chamber. So uh, in the Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, this is like a, it's like a torture device that Dennis Hopper's character, uh, Bowser, King Koopa, set up. Um like an interrogation sort of thing. Like if he doesn't, if, if you don't tell him what he wants to know, then he de-evolves you into a, a Goomba or a, or a Koopa, uh, which I'm sure we'll see a card of here coming up. Um, but it's this big, this big piece of machinery that hangs from the ceiling, which I just noticed is like <laughs> made out of PVC pipe um, and like assorted Home Depot fittings. And like you go back in this chair and it slides your head up into it. Um, and then you turn into a Goomba, which, like I said, we'll show you in a little bit here. All right, next card is Spike and Iggy at bay. So Spike and Iggy are sort of like the like the two big henchmen of uh, King Koopa or Dennis Hopper. And um, they're just like real sleazy kind of guys. Uh, and they are they are named after, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, which two Mario characters those are, but you're going to see that um, all of the, um, b I mean, besides like Mario and Luigi and Daisy, of course, um, a lot of the minor characters that show up in this movie uh, are like kind of based off of uh, minor characters from the, from the games up to, I think, well, because up to Super Mario World had come out at this time, so it's at least up to, or it's up to that. So you got like Thwomps and Bullet Bills and stuff like that. Uh, Spike and Iggy included, of course. Big plans. This one is a landscape card, and we got them, and they're like video game colors, which they they don about three quarters of the way through the movie. Uh, they're just kind of wearing their street clothes up until that point. Um, so it's cool. Like this, it's like the big, like hero, hero moment, so to speak. All right, here we go. Okay. Mario swings in. Uh, this is when if I'm, I, it's been so long since I've seen this movie and it's really, it's a really hard movie to find too. Uh, I should mention, I tried looking for it recently. It's not available on any streaming services, like anywhere. Um, and who knows, <laughs> who knows where it is. Um, the best I can do, hopefully, is get, get like a DVD copy of it 
And there was a Blu-ray that was released, I think, I think in Europe. I don't know if there's an American version of it. Um, but uh, anyway, back to the cards here, what we're, what we're really looking for here. So uh, at this point in the movie, uh, there's this, there's this plot They're They're kidnapping all like the bad guys are kidnapping all of these, all of these uh, women from our world and taking them back to the other world because they're looking for princess Daisy. Uh, the one who there's a whole thing with a meteorite involved and she has a piece of this meteorite. And if she combines her piece back with the rest of the meteorite, uh, it will combine our two universes back together or something like that. Because the meteor that killed all the dinosaurs like split our universe apart from like the dinosaur. So like dinosaurs still exist in this parallel version of Manhattan. It's this whole like parallel, parallel universe situation. But it's at this point when uh, when Mario breaks in and and like frees all of the other other captives. Uh, there's a uh, there's a Koopa. So the bad guys like the the Goombas and the Koopas. They're just like these very large men with trench coats, uh, and they have small heads. Which um, going back to the de evolution chamber, uh, when your head comes out of this thing, as you can see, the guy's even wearing like the the costume. When you come out of this thing, you look like you look like that basically and you're you're big and dumb and you have and they give you a gun and you just kind of march around all right so this is the very very like last frame of the movie um i don't remember exactly what it is she says maybe it says so on the back oh we got a checklist too that's good um mm -mm -mm. Weeks after their amazing adventure, Brian and Luigi are relaxing at home, and suddenly Daisy bursts through the door. You've got to help me, she cries. So strapping on their tool belts, the Mario brothers prepare for who knows what. Which, unfortunately, it's nothing, because they never made another Mario Brothers movie after this. Um, so it ends on sort of a, uh, like, Back to the Future Part 2, or Back to the Future Part 1, I mean, like, joke cliffhanger. Uh... You know, we're like, where we're going, we don't need roads. And they're like, oh, hey, look, there could be a sequel. But in this case, it never panned out. So, all right, we have our checklist here. There are, ooh, there are indeed, good Lord, yeah, there, <laughs> there are 100 cards in the base set. I've never seen a double-sided checklist before. Uh, and we also have H1, H2, and H3, which are hologram Goomba, Koopa, and Yoshi. Uh, now I wonder if they mean King Koopa or if they mean the uh, like just like the henchman Koopa. I guess we're going to find out here. Um, interestingly enough, card 99 is the checklist. Card 100 just says Summer 1993. So maybe it'll be a card that'll be representative of all of 1993. Who knows? Or all of Summer 1993. Who knows? All right, next are the slimy scoundrels. Who are these guys? Oh, these are these are the Scapelli brothers. These are like their rival, um, like rival, like plumbing company. I guess rivals to the Mario brothers. Uh, you know, they 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 have you know dress shirts and cell phones, and you know that they're they're representative of like you know big business plumbers uh, versus them. You know, running a sort of a mom and pop business out of their house. Or apartment, I should say. Um, they're slimier than worms and oil, but the cafe owner knows that you don't say no to Scapelli. So there's obviously some other connections in there somewhere. There, so there's a Danielle is kidnapped. Uh, that is this is um, I think it's Mario's girlfriend, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so she, so she's one of the, one of the women that is uh, kidnapped, um, at the beginning of the movie and does get, does get broken out eventually. Okay. That was pack one. I hope, uh, my two viewers enjoying it so far. I feel like the stream's probably going to be, uh, <laughs> well, it's like it took me 15 minutes to go through one pack here. Gonna find out. Rip and tear, rip and tear. Here we go. Okay, the fungus is avenged. Uh, this is from the end 
of the movie before they go back uh, to their own. Or no, this is after they go back, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, this okay, this is after this is after Dennis Hopper's character has been killed. And um everyone in uh, uh, what do they call it? Dino Hatton uh is is celebrating the uh the death of the uh, of the despot. Uh Mario's tool belt. It's pretty obvious it's Mario's plumbing tool belt. Call for help. What a what a wonderful picture of Bob Hoskins. Um, okay, this is when they're uh, this is at the beginning of the movie when they're uh, they're trying to beat the Scapelli brothers uh, to a a plumbing job. All right, this is uh, Mario and uh, Daniela on a double date with uh, I think it was with a yeah with a uh, on a double date with Luigi and Daisy. Um, this is where they start, uh, talking about like the prehistoric, um, like meteorite piece that Daisy has and, you know, kind of setting up, uh, plot devices for later in the film. Okay. This is a not so dead end. This is when, yeah, this is, uh, so below the cafe that they're doing this plumbing job at, they find a uh, like a false wall, sort of think like one of those uh, walls from uh, like Mario sixty four, which didn't exist at the time. Which that's kind of interesting, uh, but it's this big nineteen ninety three CGI like a ripply wall that they like fall into, and then they go through like seizure land, and then they end up in uh, Dino Hatton. Ooh. Get those plumbers. And uh, there's a picture of uh, Dennis Hopper uh, in sort of a disturbing uh, allegory to like Donald Trump is the best. Yeah, there you go. There's another picture of him. He's he's not a good guy. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, and he wears a, like a sequin black suit, as you can see. And he's just he's just nasty and creepy and all in all a very good villain. I mean a pretty simple a pretty simple villain but a good villain. This is Koopa plays lawyer. I'm trying to remember what happens here. Um I think he tries to Yeah, he he, he shows up at J he shows up cuz they the Mari brothers get arrested at some point uh in in Dino Hatton. And Koopa shows up uh, to sort of, I think, to get them to spill where that meteorite piece is, but I don't think they know where it is either. Um, and he plays like he plays Mr. Nice Guy for a little bit, and then he's then he realizes they don't know anything, and, you know, becomes you know the mortal enemy. So this is this is Bertha, uh, Big Bertha. She is based on the uh, you know the big. Um, Red fish uh, in Mario World that like eats you. She's like the like human version of one of those, which is pretty interesting. And those are the uh, those are the jump boots. So when I said that everything in this movie has like a, sort of an allegory to one of the games, uh, even in, even we're we're talking even down to like being able to jump like high. They have like these uh, hydraulic boots that like you know, like propel them through the air, essentially. They got like steam coming out of them and stuff. And yes, if you were wondering, I will be getting a, uh, I have a, a card binder coming for these because I like collecting sets of trading cards for stuff that I like. And this is about the cheapest thing that had trading cards that I liked. So sibling car thieves. So they're breaking out of prison at this point. If I remember correctly, no, I take that back. They haven't gone to prison yet. Um, yeah. So then they get, but they do get captured eventually. Uh, but uh, or no, have they been in prison? I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting my events of the film a little bit confused. Um, but as you can see, uh, a lot of the designs in this, in this, in this movie are are, are great. 
Um, just looking at like that police car. And I think there's an art card later that has a better picture of it, but it's like a late eighties, early nineties, like late model, uh, police cruiser, uh, but has like a big, like bulldozer attachment on the front and like all sorts, as you can see, all sorts of like antennas and lights and stuff on it. And it's got like a, it's really like kind of dark future cyberpunky sort of design. And I, Oh, and, and it runs on, uh, you know, like the uh, the way that um, uh, bumper cars, uh, they're like attached to the ceiling with like that cable or like that, that electric stick. I don't, I don't really know what to call it, but uh, these, uh, the cars in this movie run on that same uh, principle. So they have to be like attached to like an overhead rail. Okay, so there's that. Let's see. The Spike and Iggy... Spike and Iggy Rap. I don't even know what this is. Um, I don't remember when this happens. To be perfectly honest, there's a point where I guess uh, Spike and Iggy break out in anti-Koopa protest rap. Um, it had to have happened in the movie at some point. Uh, huh. I'll have to watch the movie again. All right, um, let's see. The secret revealed. So the big secret here is... So that is... That's uh, uh, Princess Daisy. That's a big ball of fungus, which over the course of the, the, the film, uh, the fungus, which has permeated Dino Hatton, like an all... all it's just like over, it's overgrown. Uh, it uh, like aids them over the course of the, uh, the film as if it like has a mind of its own. And indeed it does. It, it, that is the, um, the King was de evolved using that machine into like primordial, you know, fungus. And there's like his throne behind it. It was, it, it was in his throne room. And, uh, when the King comes back, which I'm sure there'll be a card of it later, it's, uh, it's Lance Henriksen who's best known for being Bishop in aliens. Oh, there you go. There's a good picture of it. So there's a uh, there's like this this fungus growing all over everything. A fungus among us. It's a fungal fight to the finish. Okay. Okay. Pull of the pendant. This is also towards the end. Oh, we're getting into some art here in a second. Um. So they have uh the bad guys rather have gotten the pendant, the piece of meteorite and have successfully merged it with the rest of the meteorite, thus um, melding our two universes together. And Luigi and Daisy are desperately trying to pry it out of the, uh, out of the rest of the meteorite with tools available, uh, you know, on order to hopefully prevent uh, invasion. Okay. we got a character card here. Uh, it's interesting they don't actually title the characters anything. It's just characters. Uh, this is a... Um, oh. Because of the many different creatures that are part of the Super Mario Brothers world, a great deal of time was spent adapting these characters to fit a live-action film. Seen here is an early production sketch of a Goomba with a more colorful uniform than those finally used. Excuse me. So, yeah, this this pretty much matches up with the... Uh, um their look, their like final look in the, in the film, they still have the spiked shoulders. Uh, it's interesting. They have like rank insignia. Um, I didn't think I'd see something like that. Um, I don't know what that means. Like I'm like blown away by that, I guess, but, uh, they got like rank insignia and he, he looks a little bit more, I guess, intelligent than like they end up looking. They look kind of, they look really dopey. Um, once you get to the actual ones that were in the film, um, but overall, nice little picture. Okay, this is the this is the globe of like alternate Earth. Um, with there's there's Dino Hatton, as you can see, it's so it's it's like pre two thousand one, so we still have like the twin towers in there and everything. Um, but it's like it's like you know it's like a like a ruined Earth, uh, with the exception of the big corrupt city, just kind of sitting on top of the globe essentially strap on your belt kid let's see what does that happen there okay I I 
got a couple of the things confused earlier on. Uh, so they are called to a uh, a uh, plumbing emergency in the middle of the night at this archaeological site uh, where where Daisy works, actually, if I remember correctly. So they get called in the middle of the night, and that's when they uh, they end up going down into that portal. So pretty close here. All right, we're on pack number <laughs> pack number four now. Hopefully we'll start getting some doubles so we can speed this up a little bit. Um, okay, Luigi Mario, this is from the beginning. Oh, he, wow, he's reading a he's reading a Game Pro magazine. Kind of looks like it's um like photoshopped in, but is it though? I don't know. So it's just Luigi Mario. So there's a there's also a running joke. So the Mario Brothers, right? So last name Mario. In Mario's case, first name also Mario, so it's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. And I hope there's a Mario Mario card in here somewhere. Played by, uh, like I said before, John Leguizamo. Daisy calls for help. What's this one here? Oh, Scapelli's making trouble at the excavation site, so she calls the uh, Mario Brothers, whom she had met in a previous scene. And that's basically when the movie kicks off. Uh, they're searching for Daisy at the archaeological site. This is, like, right before they go through the portal. It's, like, this big cavern with, like, a like waterfall and everything. Okay, Spike and Iggy return. Where do they return from? Let's see. Super Creep, Spike, and Iggy happily report back to the boss Koopa that their mission has been successful. The two bun bungling henchmen have captured Daisy, the princess, who unknowingly possesses the power to merge the parallel worlds. Uh, yeah, so... You know, Henchmen report back. They're like, we got him, boss. Let's see. Let's get smart. So, yeah, there's a point where I don't remember who sets the machine off. Uh, I guess it's Koopa. So, a after one of the times where, uh, where Iggy, and, uh, Iggy and Spike uh, fail. Is that Iggy or Spike? I think that's Spike. Or is it both of them? I don't remember. Either way, they get sent through the uh, the de-evolution machine and they run it reverse. Um, and he gets like comically smart for a while. I don't remember if it lasts, though. So, Lena, that is uh, King Koopa's uh, wife. Uh, equally evil. Equally creepy. Uh, it says, Koopa's loyal lady friend. Uh, I thought they were married. Maybe they're just friends. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, Luigi's Flying Leap. What's this? It's an impossible jump, but Luigi shows little fear as he leaps over the deadly ventilation shaft in Koopa Tower. And he makes it! No, wait, he's only halfway there, dangling in midair. How can it be? Encouraged, Mario decides to try. But... Uh, yeah, there's a... I don't remember what's... what's there's something like blowing them up in the air, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't remember what it is, though. Okay, a trick up his sleeve. This is at the end of the movie. Um, during like the final showdown between uh, King Koopa and Mario. Uh, earlier in... I don't remember how much earlier in the movie it was. Uh, the fungus gave him a bomb -om, or bomb -um, or one of those, you know, one of those bombs with the feet and the eyes. Um, and so he puts it away for safekeeping. And he eventually uses it in the, uh, in the final battle uh, to get the upper hand. Okay, now we're now we're now we're moving along here. Oh, you can. Mm, I just noticed you can kind of see through the packs a little bit here, probably because of the age. Like the the foil the foiling is starting to fail on these a little bit, just from probably heat and moisture and just storage. Haven't found any hologram cards yet, which I'm sure we will. Oops, I damaged one. The resale value is going to go through the floor now here. Okay, so the Driven Crazy. This is uh, at the cafe. Uh, this is the Mario Brothers uh, van. And I think the Scapelli's park next to them or something like that, and they have a much nicer van. Um, the Pendant. So you were talking about the Pendant. Oh, there's a picture of the Pendant. Over dinner with new friends, Daisy reveals the strange circumstances of her beginnings. How 20 years ago, she was abandoned in a bundle on the steps of St. Teresa's with nothing but a rock pendant, which to this day, she has never removed. So, you know, plot point city. 
the excavation site. This is before this is before they before they go down into the uh, into the uh, excavation site and go into the portal. We got quite a <laughs> quite a hefty stack of cards here so far. All right, just a little old lady. Let's see here. What could be worse for Luigi and Mario than being lost and lonely in Erie Koopa Square? Being held up by a little old lady with a stun stick, that's what. But since the guy's dollars are useless in, in her world, the feisty senior goes for the pendant. So, yeah, there's like this this whole gag with like, you know, this little old woman. And uh, she turns out to be a mugger. And she's got like a, yeah, as, as it said on the back, like a cane, but it's electric, it, 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 it can electrocute you. Just kind of a one-off gag, you know. Let's see, lost and confused. But what point is that? Um, okay, they had just gotten arrested at this point. Koopa confronts Daisy, so she gets uh, she gets held captive at one point, obviously, because that's how that's how movies go. Um, so she he's like trying to like brainwash her to or convince her rather to like stay in Dino Hat because her lineage is a lot more complicated than she thinks. That's the, the girls spot a savior. I think they see Mario up there. Yeah, Mario signaling silently from the hallway above. Shh, he's trying to say, but Brooklyn girls are not used to being quiet. Stereotypical. Okay. Let's see, back in the real world. Okay, so this uh, is at the end. Bef this is before um, Koopa's defeated, but after pretty much everything else. Uh, the dimensional merge takes place, which there's a card coming up, or, or there might be a card coming up, I'm not sure. And it's one of the most aged-like milk things I've ever seen, if, if it happens. Let's see, number 79... Let's see. Well, it might happen. It might be 79, 80, or 81. I'm afraid of that. Um, we'll get to it if we get to it. Uh, but the um, dinosaurs show up in our uh, universe, our dimension, if you will, and wreak a little bit of havoc. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay. Okay, we should be getting into some duplicates here eventually. Family Pride. Let's see. Perhaps there's no time for a fight. But brothers Mario and Luigi argue while teetering dangerously on the brink of a splattering death inside the ventilation shaft. Finally, brotherly love is restored when, Lu when Luigi insists, I do have family pride. Because there's, I think there's a whole thing about him. There's this whole thing about him not um, wanting to be a plumber like like Mario is. You know, it's like a you know he, he's he's like a young hip dude, and he's like I don't have time for this. But in the end, he you know really grows. He really grows as Mario's brother. Let's see. So Lena disintegrates. It's pretty self-explanatory during the. Um, uh, dimensional merge. She's like trying to force the uh, meteorite piece back into the meteorite, and the power like overwhelms her, <laughs> and she turns into like a she. <laughs> it's 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 like half sight gag, half horrifying. She like gets like a white streak in her hair, and then like gets like plastered against the wall and turned into like a fossil on the wall. It's it's pretty awesome perfectly honest. Uh, there's a lot of like visual effects in this in this this film which I really I really appreciate. Hip hip hooray. What is going on here? I think this is at the end. Oh, we're getting to some behind the scenes here on the next card here. Uh do, 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 do. okay, so this is like right after um King Koopa gets uh, killed. Um he was in this like 
he's in this like um it was, it's like a hopper like a, it looks like a like an old cement hopper and oh actually i think it might have been because um if i remember correctly they filmed all of dino hatton so like all of like the the like the alternate universe scenes in a in an abandoned uh cement factory <laughs> If I remember correctly, so that probably is an old piece of like cementing equipment. Uh, now that I think about it, uh, so that at one point uh, King Koopa's in there and uh, he evolves into a T Rex, and then he he blows up eventually. So then I think that falls off the ceiling, and Mario gets out <laughs> or whatever. Um, if you look really, I don't know. I'm showing you the little picker. <laughs> um, you can see the the cars on the um, uh, like on the uh, the electric railing up there. And we got a behind the scenes card here inside Goombas. Uh, I guess those are Koopas technically, but you know, same thing. Um, and I guess it's it's just a nice. I've never I've I haven't seen a lot of uh, like pictures of behind the scenes of this movie, so this is pretty cool uh, for me at least. Um, showing some of like the, just the costume structure, which I always wondered, I always thought they were just really tall people, but as it turns out, it's just massive, like amounts of like prosthetics and stuff like that. And there's imagine it looks like, uh, oh yeah, like hydraulic controls for like the, uh, the heads. That's really interesting. Let's see what, what does this one say on the back? Oh, we finally have a duplicate. What makes a Goomba work? No, it's not food or money. It's the amazing animatronic scene here. This elaborate headgear allowed real people. Wait, real people? Does that mean <laughs> real people to become eight foot monsters without resorting to a de evolution chamber and just add one heavy coat and voila, instant Goomba? All right. So we're going to put that on there. Luigi Mario, we've seen. Daisy calls for help, we've seen. Where is Daisy? We've seen. We've seen that one. We've seen that one. That was that was kind of a cathartic in and of itself. Oh, these packs are stuck together. That peel though. All right. Okay. Come on. Oh, here we go. This oh this this is actually kind of an interesting one. Um this is like Ooh, all right. Getting ahead of ourselves here. So they have these uh, de-evolution guns, which are based off of the uh, same technology as the de-evolution chamber. I'm going to take a drink here real quick. Hold on. <sighs> okay. So there are these de-evolution guns that are based on the same technology as the de-evolution chamber. And uh, they're... they're um, old Super Nintendo Super Scopes, which are like the a Super Nintendo light gun and they're like shooting him at uh, King Koopa towards the end of the movie and he turns from Dennis Hopper into like a full blown T-Rex and this is an interesting card because he doesn't actually assume this form in, in the film uh, this is like a VFX like like I don't know if you call it like a tween frame you know like it's sort of like an anim it's sort of like between the two ends of like the anim like the animation of him turning into the T-Rex if I remember correctly maybe he might maybe he runs around like that for a little bit um I don't think so though like I said I'll have to watch the movie again I guess which <laughs> I've been uh, meaning to watch the uh, the movie again All right, here we go here's the um okay so I guess they're specifically called thwomp stompers uh, so these are the uh, these are the boots that allow you to jump at amazing heights. Um, they they got like this like whole hydraulic pressure system going on, and if I remember correctly, you have to put like these like cartridges in. You have to like plug one in there, and it like boom, you know. I don't remember if it was a one time use if they had to keep reloading them. Or if you could do it multiple times. All I know is they, they like put one in once and I don't think they ever did it again. Um, it's cool. They have uh, they have Thwomp on the uh, written on the uh, the sole. And they also have a little they have a little like embossing of a Thwomp. Uh, specifically one of the Thwomps from uh, Super Mario World. And they also and 
I never noticed this. And I think it's the same way in the film as well. Um, the uh, the treads are like reminiscent of like the spikes on the flop. If you look up a picture of it, you'll you'll know you'll see what I mean. Um, so that's a really interesting design detail. Um, huh? Yeah, just blowing my own mind over here a little bit. Anyway, let's continue. Oh, good. We do have a Mario Mario card. Um, Mario Mario in a very very Italian looking pose is the only way I can describe it. Um, meet Mario Mario, the elder Mario brother and main brain behind the family plumbing business. Cool as a popsicle in December. He's a man's man, a Mario's Mario. What could possibly ruffle this guy's feathers? He's about to find out. All right, Spike and Iggy. We already know who they are. Greasy henchmen. Daisy, Daisy, Daisy is kidnapped. Uh, so at the beginning when they're responding to that, that plumbing incident, uh, at the excavation site, which now that I think about it, why does an excavation site have plumbing? <laughs> I don't really understand that. Uh, maybe it was a false flag. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. So they, so they briefly incapacitate Mario and Luigi and they, uh, they kidnap Daisy in the process. So then the Marios have to go after, uh, Daisy or that's when they find the, uh, the portal, the woman's dorm. So these are, these are all of the, uh, of the women that were kidnapped, uh, Daisy included. And there's Mario's girlfriend. Uh, and there's two, uh, I think there might be some more too, uh, that aren't shown here. Uh, well, they're not even really named. I don't think. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see here. The Kupahari desert tunnel. Let's see. Uh, Open, yeah, and they got fun little sight gags here. Open sooner or later. The Kupahari Desert Tunnel Project, Department of Public Works. So there's a there's a, a point during the there's a car chase where they steal a cop car. Oh yeah, they steal the cop car after being in prison uh, because they see their own mug shots uh, on the like heads up display. That's right. So they're they're there's a big car chase uh, through Dino Hatton and they end up um, going through this like unfinished tunnel and they almost like smack into the ground at the bottom, uh, but they're saved by the fungus. And um, then they re-enter the city and go from there as, uh, as, but now as like fugitives essentially in this uh, alternate universe. Dancing the Dactyl. So, because of all the fun, I wish it wasn't that much glare there. Because of all the fun dinosaur theming in this movie, uh, they they show up at a nightclub at one point. I don't remember what the nightclub's called. Maybe it'll say it on the back, and it's probably a pun. The Boom Boom Bar. I think there's a, I think there is a, a something in one of the old Mario games that's called that that is called boom boom or something like that i think it sounds like something that would be in a in a mario game at least like an old one um so there's a dance that they do called the dactyl but they don't blend in because they're human um but because of all of the fun dinosaur theming in this uh in this film uh there's a uh, uh there's a scene where a bunch of people dance to uh walk the dinosaur by, uh, what band is that? I don't remember off the top of my head now. Was that Was Not Was? Yeah, Was Not Was. All right. You know, boom, boom, shakalakalaka, boom, 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 shakalaka, boom, boom. Okay, I can't sing too much of that, uh, or else, uh, I'll get taken off of YouTube permanently. But look it up sometime. It's a, it's a fun, fun 90s song. Okay, we're ooh, we're we're getting there. Ooh, we got a symbol coming up here. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the Donald Trump vibes are strong there. Vote for Koopa the sensitive. Let's see, we have the uh, we have the raw bar. It's a meat raw bar, you know, because they're they're like dino people, so they eat like raw meat. There's there's bullet bills, so that's a, that's like a direct Mario reference. I love these like like fictional neon signs. I think they're so, 
so cool. Um, and they've always like they always like stood out to me um, when I would like watch the uh, when I would watch it growing up. Um, it's just, you know just a street of uh, Dino Hat, and you know they, it's it's it doesn't really look like the, look like that big of a set street. Um, it looks like it's kind of a kind of a T intersection with like two levels, and that's about it. And but they play it to be a lot bigger than it actually is. There's a there's a better shot of a, of a Big Bertha. Let's see, a vision of meanness and red leather. It's Bertha who chases off the pendant stealing old lady. That's the good news. So the old lady, the the one the one that tried to mug them. The bad news is it's also Bertha who re-steals the pendant from the Mario the Mario boys. <laughs> They're not even the Mario brothers anymore. The Mario boys then takes off literally in her flying footwear, which I don't remember. She like. She starts off as like a bad guy, but she like turns a new leaf, and she ends up giving the Mario Brothers the the uh, the Thwomp Stompers. At uh, at I think like right after the uh, the nightclub scene. All right, so this is oh, this is during the interrogation at the um at the prison. This is when his like uh, smiling visage is kind of fallen away. Yeah, Koopa's true sinister nature reveals itself the minute he asks Luigi and Mario for Daisy's meteorite pendant. The what? Luigi responds innocently, and Koopa, not taking the what for an answer, is ready to choke Mario. Wait. But he's choking Luigi. I don't know. Okay, here's another uh, main character that you all know and love. It's Yoshi. Uh, now, well, so he's being held... He's, like, a pet, essentially, of uh, the... The Koopa uh, clan. I don't know what else to call him. But, um... He's just a baby T-Rex. And he's he's pretty cute. I mean, he's not cute like he is in, like, the in like the games. But, you know, he's just, like, a realistic little T-Rex. Makes little T-Rex noises. Uh, and he's up in, like, the, um... He's chained up in, like, the, uh suite at the top of the tower that uh, Daisy gets thrown into when she gets held captive. And then they make they they make friends with each other and I don't remember what happens to Yoshi at the end of the movie. Like he's like there for a while and she like takes the she like takes the collar off of him cuz he's like chained up like I said. But I don't remember what happens to him. I hope he gets out. <laughs> Maybe if they make their uh, their thirty year sequel, uh, in gosh, <laughs> yeah, maybe if they make their thirty year sequel, uh, we will find out what happens to Yoshi. It's going to be kind of hard without Mario, though, unfortunately. But anyway, so a mushy landing. Uh, they've uh, just escaped from the uh, nightclub, wearing their Thwomp Stompers. In also wearing their very like dumb and dumber esque uh, nightclub uh, suits, and um, they land in a big pile of garbage. Invasion. All right. So the uh, I didn't realize they're all different heights too. That's almost kind of creepy, <laughs> like creepier. Um, but these are the uh, these are the uh, Goombas and Koopas that have showed up. There's more of a, a picture of one um, as you see it in the film. They're they're interesting because they all have all of the uh, all of the Koopas and all of the uh, Goombas. They all have unique heads, um, which is really interesting. Like they didn't use the same the same head for each and every one. They all retain like unique. Uh, it's like certain unique features of like the person or of like, or like the, I guess, I don't, I can't really call them. They're, they're not humans, but you know, like the, the people from Dino Happen, Dino Hatton that they came from, um, like uh toad, for instance, he shows up earlier, uh, played by, I think he was played, might've been played by a musician. Um, I'm Googling this real quick here. Played by maybe not. Uh, 
a man named Mojo Nixon, who I guess is a yeah. He I guess he's a oh he's a psychobilly musician. I almost said psychobilly magician. Um, but he has like this this this. I hope there's a card of him later. Let me see if there is. Let's see. We might see him later, but um, there's a picture or there his like hairdo. It's like a spiral, and it like starts at the top of his head and it spirals around his head all the way to like the back of his neck. And when he gets he because he gets turned into a goomba eventually. Um, he's got um he has like a like a, a spiral pattern on his head, which is pretty interesting. That's just a, for instance. That was a really long winded way to say that they're all unique. Anyway. Okay, sad goodbyes. I th what happens here? Oh yeah, because um, so because Princess Daisy, uh, her lineage technically lies within Dino Hatton, um, or I guess the Mushroom Kingdom as a whole. Uh, she wants to stay there to like reconnect with her her real father and stuff like that. So they have to uh, they have to leave her there. Even though she she does show up at the end with like the with like the gun and everything, but we'll never know what happens after that. Uh, this is the Koopa symbol. You see it throughout the throughout the movie. Uh, it's just the symbol for Koopa. It's a K with a fist. Um, I don't think it means much past that. Um, yeah, so it's symbol. <laughs> All right. Next one, next one, next one. Let's see. There's got to be an easier way to get these open. Oh, okay. We got a couple we can get rid of here. Okay, Family Pride. We've seen that one. We've seen that one. Oh, now we're getting into all duplicate territory here. We've seen that one, we've seen that one, we've seen that one, we've seen that one. All right. So now this this stream is going to take off, pacing-wise, I mean. Ooh, getting some good stuff here now, I think. Oh, there's a character card of Koopa, played by, like I said, Dennis Hopper, doing his best, like, his best uh, Donald Trump impression. Um, yeah, he's just, he's slimy. That's all that really needs to be said about him. He's, he's slimy and creepy and nasty. Um, perfect villain. So locked up, uh, they have just been imprisoned in what I can only describe as like, they're like these like white cages that are like stacked on top of each other. Um, like. We're talking like to like warehouse height. They're just like they're stacked maybe six, seven high, and they have like a single um, fluorescent light hanging in the middle. And I th I don't remember if they are prison mates with Toad or if Toad is a. I think he might be like in the one above them. I think he's like hanging his arms down through the cage and like talking to him, you know. And he sort of convinces them to like break out. Let's see, making tracks. This is what? Are the, let's say, but what, what point is this here? Okay, so they um, they're trying to escape prison at this point, and that's like the that's like the the prison officer that originally like um, got their names and everything. He gets punched in the face, um, but they're about to get de-evolved, I think. If I remember correctly, um, but they make their escape. There's a so there's a Mario dancing with Big Bertha in a very it's a very strange dance is the best way to describe it. Um, one on the dance floor of the Boom Boom Bar, Mario attempts a near impossible mission. He must keep his dance par partner Bertha so busy whirling and twirling that she doesn't notice him swiping the rock pendant off her massively muscled neck. Um, which of course they uh, they don't they don't play into the fact that like 
it gets kind of it gets a little like you know racy. Gets a little sexual. Yeah, a Mario movie gets a little sexual. Figure that one out. If if you watch it, you'll see what I mean. It's not like explicit, but it's like, whoa, we're going there, huh? Anyway, so Daisy and the Rebels. Daisy, having escaped from Koopa's room, dashes down the hallways of the tower, only to run smack into Spike and Iggy. You miserable lowlife, she sneers angrily, but she's about to discover that the two former goons are now on her side. So, yeah, now that I remember correctly, they have um, they have parted ways with uh, Koopa. I think after after they get like more intelligent with the with the uh, using like the. Uh, the de-evolution chamber device thing. And they become allies for the rest of the film. Let's see. So end of the road. So uh, this is after the, after Mario breaks all of the uh, ladies out of, out of prison. And they go down a, um, they go down a pipe on a mattress, sort of like those levels from once again, from Mario 64, which didn't exist yet. Um, and they get covered in what can I what what I can only imagine is like like asbestos powder. Anyway, monkey business. This is one of the Scapellis, if I remember correctly. Um. Yes. So, um, the Scapellis show up, and they're like they're like they're they're quite obviously the like the Italian mafia, and um. Koopa tries to hit Mario with the de-evolution gun, and uh, it hits one of the Scapellis instead. And because we uh, we don't directly descend from the dinosaurs, we descend from monkeys instead. It turns him into a chimp. And early '90s chimp movie gags ensue for a little bit. Last one we have vehicles, the card, and you can see more of like the like cyberpunk almost kind of blade runner sort of sort of sort of blade runner looking like you know lived in future design of like the vehicles they it's it's a lot of like like late model like Oldsmobiles and things like that uh like in Dino Hatton but they all have like big like these giant engine blocks on them and you know all sorts of stuff going on really trashy looking, but at the same time, like really cool looking, if you ask me in order to create the many wild and comical cars seen in super Mario brothers, the production team commissioned artists to create illustrations of the vehicles needed. These production drawings were used to modify real vehicles to look like the crazy cars of Koopa's dino world. Um, and if I remember correctly, there is, I think there is a blade runner connection, uh, to all of this. Ooh, man. Look at that. We must, we must be getting near a complete set here pretty soon. I'll have to start putting them in order. I won't put them in order on stream because that'll take forever. But um, going back to the Blade Runner connection, uh, the I think it was the art director on Blade Runner was the art director on this, if I remember correctly. Let me double check that. I think... Let's see. Maybe not. Um, but there was the art director on Blade Runner worked on this movie in some capacity. Um, which I don't think I don't. I, I maybe I maybe won't have any direct influence over it. It's just an interesting connection, if nothing. Um, I might have to. Maybe verify that in uh, in some fashion later. But I at least I thought there was a Blade Runner connection. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Anyway. So let's get smart. We've seen that. Lena has the power. I th yeah, we've seen that already, I think. Yeah. yeah. His loyal lady friend. We've seen that one. 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 Okay, we have our first pack of all duplicates so far. No holograms yet. Okay. Oop, 
Oops, I'm shifting my camera here. There we go. Let's hope the camera doesn't spectacularly fail here. Oh, we have another double. Oh, this might be the same pack as before here. Yep. All right. Okay, we got some new ones here. <clears throat> Scapelli. So these are the Scapellis as they show up at the... Yeah, this they're showing up at the beginning here. I don't remember what their Anthony Scapelli really knows how to make an entrance delivered by limo delivered by limo and flanked by his loyal well-dressed sidekicks. The owner of Scapelli construction arrives at a digging site by the East river to check out the progress on his latest project. So I think it's like corporate mob hoods. They're like, Hey, we're, we're building something here. And she's like, it's a dig. It's like an archeological site. Be careful. And they're like, no, you be careful. Let's see. All right. Next one, Scapelli Sabotage. Deep inside the dark tunnel of bones and dirt, Daisy and Luigi accidentally discover the latest Scapelli wrongdoing, Sabotage. The bad boy plumbers have gotten to the gotten to the pump room and now water is seeping in, threatening to flood Daisy's pet project. So the uh, the Scapelli's um, sabotage the uh, dig site to possibly drive them out of there. And that's when the... That's when, like, the portal scene happens and stuff. Let's see. So these are this is a parallel dimension. This is when they first show up uh, in Dino Hatton after falling through the portal, going through Seizure Land. Um, down in, down on Koopa Square, the Mario Bo the they keep calling them the Mario Boys. The Mario Boys begin to suspect that they're not in Brooklyn anymore. For one thing, the hot dog. Stands serve lizards on buns and snakes on a stick. Maybe it's a parallel dimension, says Luigi, but even he can't believe that. So there is a there is sort of a throwaway thing at the beginning where uh, Luigi's watching a um, sort of an unsolved mysteries kind of you know paranormal show, uh, and they and they're talking what else but about parallel dimensions. When Mario's like, "Oh, turn that off," you know, do you really believe that? And he's like, "Yeah, I believe it," and now they both believe it. Okay, defungusing. This is uh, in the. This is right after they get arrested, and they have to get uh, cleansed of fungus before they go into the go into the prison system. And they get hit with this giant vat of uh, blue um, blue goo, which soaks them to the bone. Uh, delivered to them by a guy uh, wearing a gas mask, and he kind of looks like a, a shy guy a little bit, which I'm wondering if he's supposed to be a shy guy. Um, whatever happened to frisking and fingerprinting? Arrested by Koopa's cruel cops, Mario and Luigi are instead subjected to sprays and powders used to defungus suspects. Not only are these guys embarrassed, unfortunately, they're also ticklish. Um, yeah, they get like sprayed down the front of their pants with like defungusing. Uh, uh, spray and stuff like that. Okay, the tables are turned. What happens here? Oh. So, uh, at one point, Koopa gets um, shoved into his own chair and sent through the ringer. And I think that kicks off his de-evolution into a T-Rex, if I remember correctly. I mean the 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 de evolution guns I think like bring it the rest of the way, but he definitely goes through like some sort of DNA change uh, after he goes through this process. There's the boom boom bar once again another really lovely, just lovely aesthetic if you ask me. It says boom boom bar in like big neon letters. Just just a cool like '90s club. Oh, there's another fun picture of Yoshi. Um, that is the... So they, it's interesting. They have to use 
um, like to like point at things on. So like all of their like communication, they don't have like phones. They have like these uh, like video phone touchscreen things, but they're not touchscreens. You have to use a a light gun in like video game fashion to like shoot at the options that you want. And that's what one of those is. There's a better picture of Yoshi. It's just a cute, big headed, like realistic lizard T Rex sort of thing. What is what 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 is he doing here though? Lassie, move over. Here comes Yoshi. Daisy, very very nearly strangled by the jealous and hateful Lena, is saved at the last minute by no other than this than this tender Tyrannosaurus Rex. And thanks to Yoshi, Daisy finally sees her big chance to escape. So I guess he—that's th- how he plays back into the uh, into the plot. Okay, mass for invasion. So um, now down on the streets of Dino Hatton, uh, Koopa is massing his army together for one final push against Mario and uh, those who wish to turn against him. Let's see. Come on. Oop. Making a mess here. Okay, I'm gonna throw these away real quick. Okay, Mysterious Woman. If I remember correctly, this is Daisy's mom. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, this is Daisy's mom. Looks like it's played as the same. I can't I can't tell. Looks like the same actress as Daisy. I never noticed that. Maybe it isn't. Maybe I'm just seeing things. But um, on a dark and rainy night 20 years ago, a young, desperate woman places a precious bundle on the steps of St. Teresa's, but the package holds no ordinary contribution to the church. Within lies a cone-shaped pendant and an 18-inch egg in mid-hatch. So uh, Daisy gets uh, hatched from an egg at the beginning of the movie, like the very beginning of the movie, uh, amidst like a, a thunderstorm. And there's a bunch of nuns watching her hatch. You know, it's this whole, like, oh, what's going on kind of thing. And it's like a cult, if I remember. Or no, it isn't a cold open. Because uh, there's this whole uh, intro where Mario says, like, <laughs> he like he talks about, like, the, the meteorite hitting the Earth and, like, wiping all the dinosaurs. And he goes, bye-bye dinosaurs at one point. Um... And it's like all pixelated and stuff. Probably to show like the video game connection. This looks like a lot more than a hundred cards, but I don't know. These are duplicates. I don't know. We're getting there. Okay, we got Daisy or Princess Daisy, archaeologist by day, princess uh, by night. Uh, there's Lena, bad lady. What more? What more needs to be said? She's a really tall hairdo. Uh, gets turned into a skeleton, like I said earlier. Oh, I see some shine. Okay, there's Toad. All right, so now you can see Toad's weird, weird haircut. Um, it's like a spiral that like goes from the top of his head to the bottom, and he has like a tuft of hair in the front. Uh, he was arrested uh, for playing guitar. It was he was playing an anti Koopa like protest song in the streets, and he got arrested. Uh, and he has this, uh, this like one of those, like um, one of those hands-free like harmonica rigs around his neck, uh, which gets taken off of him when he gets arrested. But then when he he gets turned into a goomba, uh, they put it back onto him, and he plays the harmonica. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go! Boom! Oh, God! With that, that is some, that is shiny. That is, <laughs> you know, she looks like a skeleton. That it looks a lot better in real life. It's nice and nice and bright in real life. At least, oh, there we go. There you can get some shine out of that. Yoshi to the rescue. Oh, it's oh, that kind of that kind of sucks. It's just the same card back as the um, other Yoshi to the rescue, but it's an, just holographic. They could have said something new, like, look at this new holographic card, but no, guess not. But we will put that right there. That is one of the three. Or we'll put it right... 
and put it right here. So the pendant, we've seen that one. The excavation site, I think we've seen that one already. Excuse me. Yeah, we've seen that one. Yeah, we've seen that one. All right. I kind of want to see a, uh, a holographic Dennis Hopper now. But I guess I guess we're gonna see. Let's see. All right. All right. Seen it. 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 And seen it. All right. The ventilation shaft. Uh, this is when uh, Luigi goes through his personal growth. And he, goes, and he goes, yes, I do have family pride. That scene. All right. Um, yeah, they're up in like the, they're up in like Koopa Tower at this point. It's pretty much, pretty much towards the end of the movie, like before the final battle. Okay, put that there. Lena becomes energized. Lena, diving for the falling pendant, lands on top of a power grid, and snap, crackle, pop, she's energized. <laughs> now a frizzy-haired french fry, she takes, off a she takes off in a frenzy for the meteorite chamber, the precious rock, in her hot hands. So this is before she gets turned into a skeleton. Koopa gets his. <laughs> ah. um, ooh, we're getting to something else cool here in a second. Koopa gets his. Now that the merging of dimensions has been halted, there's another order of business to keep Koopa from trying any future shenanigans. Out on the streets of Koopa Square, Mario takes aim with a Devo gun. The beam hits Koopa dead on. So this is when he turns into the T-Rex. If I remember correctly. No, this is after. He turns back into Koopa, and then he gets hit with the Devo gun, and then he turns into slime. Because that's like the most basic life form, is primordial slime. There we go. So it gets turned to like bacteria, essentially. Okay, weaponry. So this is uh, one of the... Yeah, this is like the flamethrower, if I remember correctly. Which, hey, I just realized they're totally throwing fireballs in this movie. I'm making realizations just looking at the cards here. So these these flamethrowers, they just don't... They, they're not regular flamethrowers. They shoot like balls of fire, just like in the game. Let's see, one of the most interesting elements of the production of Super Mario Brothers was the detail incorporated into the weapons seen throughout the film. Seen here is a detailed production sketch of a toaster, a mini flamethrower used by Koopa towards the end of the movie. A toaster. So a mysterious woman, seen that one, seen that one, seen that one, seen that one. At least we're uh, getting some variety in these. I had opened a, uh, a box of uh, Judge Dredd cards once. And um, I started getting packs that had exactly the same cards in them, which seemed like kind of a letdown. I mean, I got a full set out of them, but still kind of a letdown. Anyway, let's see. The Fungus is Avenged. We've seen that. Mario's Tool Belt. We've seen that. Call for Help. We've seen that. Bill and Napoli. We've seen that. I'm Not So Dead End. We've seen that. Get Those Plumbers. We've seen that. Koopa Plays Lawyer. Bertha bails him out. Hey, we've seen all those. Okay. Okay. I think we're really going to start getting into doubles territory here. I mean, we already have, but we're going to get even more into doubles territory. Daisy's kidnapped. We've seen it. We've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen that. We've seen that. I've seen all those. There are a couple that we're still missing here. I know that, like, just based on the checklist, there are a couple that I know we haven't seen yet, so we're going to keep going. Come on. Wouldn't that suck if we get through this whole box and we don't get a complete set? There's no way we can't. Okay, the mushroom. Let's see... 
After diving to the ground to avoid the, the blast of Koopa's Devo gun, Mario reaches for a weapon with which to defend himself. As it turns out, all he can find says tool belt is, is a mushroom. Trust the fungus, he pronounces, hopefully. Um, and I think that's uh, right after that. I think the uh, the the fungus gives him the bamboo uh, to like finish off Koopa. Let's see, a brilliant idea. Whatever became of Spike and Iggy, the two idiots turned geniuses get a great idea. They figure when their adventures in the other world make an incredible Nintendo video game. Hmm, something definitely to think about. Okay, two days or two hours? Shifty-eyed Doug and Mike tell the Riverfront Casino owner, Pascal, that it's a two-day job. A two-hour job counters honest Mario, but Pascal's stuck with a leaky dishwasher and desire to lift past tomorrow hands the gig to Scapelli's sinister scoundrels. So there's, it's just a, a point in the movie where, uh, well, at the very beginning, where they're like, oh, you know, uh, we're, the, we're the better plumbers. And then the Mario Brothers are like, oh, no, we're the better plumbers. Fossils and Friendship, another new one. Okay, this is also at the beginning when they find the, uh, when they find the fossils. Or, not when they find the fossils at the dig site, when Daisy is showing Lu Luigi uh, what she's found down in the dig site, like on the deep underground. Let's see. Okay. In Hot Pursuit. Oopa. So this is at towards the, this is at, at the beginning. Looking down from their perch atop the subway platform, Mario and Luigi spot Daisy down on the street. Seeing them, she calls out desperately, but is abruptly yanked into a waiting taxi. The guys yell after her, attempting to chase the cab. Yes, card number 27, so this is when they first show up. Daisy meets Koopa. I don't know if we've seen this one yet. Okay, we're coming up to uh, to the next one here. Now that the uh, the Koopa, now that Koopa has Daisy as his prisoner, all he needs is the pendant. I need to find some friends of yours, plumbers. He says charmingly, but Daisy knows that helping Koopa will only hurt her and her friends. So she pretends to know nothing. I'm taking another drink here. Mm. Okay, Let's see what's that? Toad goes Goomba. So there's there's Toad having freshly turned into a Goomba. And you can see like the spiral, like the spiral design on his on his head. And I think Koopa says Goomba, and he responds with Goomba, you know, because he's like simple or simple minded now or whatever. Toad is the first to undergo treatment in Koopa's de-evolution chamber, strapped to a chair and locked in a pod. He de-evolves by sixty-five million years. The result: Toad is now one of Koopa's reptilian tribe of guards, the Goombas. Sludge gulpers. Tracking down a meteorite pendant calls for special transportation. An enormous sludge gulper proves the perfect vehicle as the newly formed team of Mario, Luigi, Spike, and Iggy set out together to seek out the all-important rock. So it's like midway through the movie. They essentially steal a garbage truck. Uh, but in typical Mario Brothers movie, movie fashion, it's a big, dark future Dump truck full of trash bags and slime. This one feels a little bit thicker. Wonder if we'll get another hologram. Oh, we see weaponry again. Yep, Daisy's kidnapped. Uh, the woman's dorm. Yeah, yep, 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 and yep. All right. So I think that one might actually be the same as the previous one with the weapon card in it. Okay, Daisy and the Rebels, we've seen it. End of the Road, we've seen it. Monkey Business, seen it, seen it. Seen it, seen it, seen it, seen it. Oh. Come on, we gotta get some new ones in here. Oh, yeah, Koopa's... Koopa's symbol. Alright, seen it. 
seen it. No more talk. Yep. 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 How many more do we have? Oh, we still got it. We have a bunch still. We will. We will get a complete set. We have this many left. So okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fold the box here. I hold on to the box and put the cards back in it. Ooh, jeez. These have been stuck together for stuck together since nineteen ninety three. Let's see, so that, done, 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 okay. Come on, we still got to get these other two holograms in here. It says one in 18 packs. <sighs> Same one again. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Oh, this is a new one. Okay. Finally. All right. So this is the elevator. Uh, there's a scene where they where they're in an elevator this is like after they they have fully become the super mario brothers they have their boots and their like game costumes on more or less and they're in a big elevator with i want to say about 20 goombas and they're kind of trapped in the they're, they're trapped in the back of the elevator and they haven't been seen yet so they uh they're playing like elevator music like a waltz and they get the uh they get the goombas to like slow dance with each other and they like slow dance their way out of the elevator essentially they start like swaying them to the beat anyway so that goes there the ice slide so there's a that's the pipe that they're that all the ladies and mario are going down um on the mattress now it says on the back here i just noticed with a mattress as their magic carpet, Mario and the Brooklyn girls take advantage of the ice-encrusted duct inside Koopa's tower's ventilation system and swoosh through the bowels of the building at breakneck speed. Down, down, down. Now, it's interesting they say magic carpet. I wonder if this is supposed to be like a reference to, um, like, Mario 2. Because there's, like, magic carpets in it. Like, ones that you can, like, take from the bad guys and, like, levitate on them for a little bit. Maybe? I don't know. That's a guess. Um, okay. Materialized in Brooklyn. So Koopa has shown up in our terrestrial world and is about to hit Mario with the de-evolution gun, which, as you can see, is indeed a super scope, but they, like, modified it for the movie. Oh, here we go. This is what the summer 1993 card was. <laughs> Kinda, kind of boring. Kind of boring. I thought it was going to be, I don't know, a little bit more spectacular than this. It's just the same background as the trading cards are. Just the full, the full thing. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice little, nice little picture of the, uh, of the logo and everything. What does it say on the back here? <clears throat> I'm gonna take one more drink. So I don't dry out here completely. Oops, I muted myself. Summer 1993. The summer of 1993 is the summer of Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. The movie, or maybe Super Mario Boys, starring Bob Hoskins, Dennis Hopper, John Leguizamo, and Fisher Stevens, uh, who plays either Spike or Iggy, I don't remember which. Skybox International is proud to present this original trading card series documenting the story and production of this exciting film. I would have been a sucker for these cards. Um... If I could have gotten them when I was a kid, but you know, I was I was born in 1992, so I was about one when this movie came out. Nobody touches my tools. 
Only someone with a death wish would dare to stand up to Scapelli's cronies, unless it's Mario Mario, who has a pet peeve about being pushed around. He tells Doug and Mike Scapelli, you don't know a pipe from a crowbar. Because they're, you know, they're, they, have, they have all this funding, but they're not really good plumbers. The Scapellis, I mean, not the Marios. Excavation by Moonlight. Uh, Daisy and Luigi go on a date to the excavation site where she shows them the bones that she found. Let's see. Where are we? Okay, so they've just shown up in Dino Hatton at this point. And there's there's not too much to see in the background there. Just some... Uh, well, not, not really. It's just a lot of people <laughs> waiting around and like... Just black clothes for the most part. Um, silver accents. You know, kind of futury. Kind of separate from... Well, really set supposed to be really separate from our universe or whatever. Okay, who called the cops? So these are like the police. You can see Toad's wonderful haircut from the side. Um, and yeah, it's just the they have like these like the police have these big like spiked shoulder pads, and like they almost kind of they're almost kind of look like the uh, what are they what are those called like the Buzzy Beetles or whatever like those. Those black shelled enemies from like the original game. Maybe they're supposed to be like them. Um, they have uh, they have like like a really punked out like studded uh, police jacket, as you can see. They really don't look like good guys. Oh, same one again. Oh, a little bit. Ooh, we got some more shine. Hopefully, it's something different. Oh, there we. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, we'll get to that one in a second. Let's look at the rest of them first. All right, we've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it. We've seen it. All right, so here we go. Oh, okay. Right, how am I going to... Okay, so there's... This is Lemmy Goes Goomba. Lemmy? I thought that was Toad. Wait. Who's the hell's... Wait a second. I put it one hand here. Okay, so I guess he goes by Lemmy in the movie at one point. <laughs> um, I don't remember that, but the picture is... <laughs> The <laughs> picture's hilarious, though. So, it's his head, like, photoshopped onto the, like, the VFX body for the, well, not even photoshopped. Photoshop didn't exist back then. But, like, composited onto the um, the VFX, like, costume body for the Goomba. And then when you tilt the card, <laughs> he turns into his little Goomba self. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. There's so much glare, though. I don't know if I will, but that one, that's, that's legitimately hilarious because <laughs> his head looks, his head's like, like way too high definition for his body. So you can tell it's like from a different picture. It's like weirdly high definition. It's like more high definition than the cards are. And then you move it a little bit. I can't even get it, get down to it. There we go. Oh, it's reflecting light all over the room here. There we go. That's a good. That's a good. That's about as good as you're gonna get here. And then you get like the the correct head, and look, it's the creepiest looking thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, these these uh these guys used to scare the hell out of me when I was a kid. Um, but I still love this movie. Let's see. So that's two hologram cards. We're missing one. So hopefully we can get it in this next. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten packs. Ten packs left. Can you feel the excitement? I know I can. Let's see. I'm seeing duplicates already here, but we'll see. Okay, we've seen it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So those are. Which these are these are all the uh, if you want to see. These are all the uh, duplicates we have so far. Uh, 
Okay, back to pack number one. It looks like... Yeah. That is the first pack. Come on, we gotta get... Le Come on. We're almost there. Another shall we dance? Eh, eh, eh. Oh. Yep. Come on, let's go out with a bang and not a whimper here. Defungusing again. So that one. been almost 30 years since these have been opened. And I can't believe that we wouldn't get a full set here. Okay, they're getting a little bit more... They're getting a little different, even though they're duplicates, but... <sighs> Excuse me. Even... Yeah, we... I don't know. We Maybe we have a full set. Let's see. Are there any names that I don't recognize here? And we might have most of these. I take that back. We might be we might be farther along than I think here, so let's just hope we can get that last hologram at least here. I will be, and this might be kind of sad to say, but I might be kind of brokenhearted if we don't get that last hologram. Okay, we're down to our last four. Three, okay, we got that, Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, last pick. Come on. Better see that shine. Better see that shine. <sighs> Damn it. Well, we got two of them. Unless I missed one in here, but I doubt it. Nope. Yep, that's it. That is all she wrote. So, you know what, might as well see if we got a complete set even. Let's see, how am I gonna, how am I gonna, how am I gonna order these? So 
So we're going to go through an order here. I'm not going to be talking as much here for a minute. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves. And truthfully, as long as we got a full set, I will take that just fine. Nice. I do on here.
Oops. Let's see. It's going to say I'm missing 99 for a second, but 99 is the checklist, so. Whew. Let's see here. We're going to go do a quick run through of the numbers here to make sure we have one of each. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one. Whoops, getting ahead of myself here. Forty five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight, forty nine, fifty two, fifty three, fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, sixty, sixty one, sixty two, fifty three, four, sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine, nice, seventy. We're missing 71, all right. 73, oh, oh thank God. <laughs> that, that scared me more than it should. <laughs> 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Oh, thank God. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. That is one full set of Super Mario Brothers, the movie, trading cards. Look how they shine. Plus we have Lemmy Goes Goomba, which is... One of the H's. Let me look at the look at see if I can find the um checklist in here real quick. This <laughs> this giant stack of cards I have now. There was another one in here. No. Towards the front, maybe it was towards the front. Oh, 
There's got to be an easier way to look for this. <laughs> There was another, there was another checklist in here, I swear. I just wanted to see what the other hologram card is I was missing. That's like the only card I'm missing, so maybe if I am insane, I'll see if I can find it on eBay or something. There it is. Okay, let's see. What am I missing? Let's see. I was also thinking that maybe uh, I go through the stack and it would just be magically stuck to one of the other ones or something. Uh, so let's see here. I am missing... H, I guess H2, yep, I'm missing H2, uh, so if anybody that watches the stream eventually out there has Super Mario Bros. H2, I will buy it off of you, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I don't know, kind of bu bugs me not having a complete set. Um, but I'll see if I can rectify that. Anyway, thank you for watching me unbox what is quite literally one of the more nostalgic things of my childhood. One of the nostalgic films, I should say, of my childhood. Um, put that in there. These cards are, like I said, going into a binder. Um, <laughs> they're going into a binder, uh, tomorrow, uh, should be coming in the mail. And anyway, yeah, thank you for watching. So anyway, until next time, be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe to me, Dark Mario 2. I just got the connection. <laughs> Uh, who still makes reviews on YouTube and now might do unboxings like this because this this was pretty fun for at least for me it was pretty fun. Um, maybe I'll find some more um, obscure trading cards in the future and I can open those up and see what they're like on the inside. Anyway, until next time, this is Dark Mario Two signing off.